All right, so now we're going to look at solving some equations that aren't necessarily quadratic, but we can use the techniques that we just learned in order to solve them. Um, so we're going to, so they're going to involve quadratics <laughs> or solving quadratics in the end. So hidden quadratic equations. All right, so now this first one, the first thing you should always do whenever you're solving an equation like this, especially if you already got it equal to zero, it, you know, you want to factor it somehow. And um, first thing to do is look to see if there's any common factors among all of, all of the terms. And you can see all of these involve a factor of x. So I'm going to actually start by factoring out um, x minus 6x minus 16. Okay. And now you can see we have a quadratic times an x. And um, we can still solve this by, by factoring and using the uh, zero product property. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor this quadratic. Um, so uh, the, this quadratic factor. <laughs> and so I'm looking for factors of negative 16 that add up to negative 6. All right. So let's look at factors of 16. 16 times 1 or... Um, let's see, we got uh, 8 times 2, and we have uh, 4 times 4, and I, now the, the product has to be a negative 16, so one of these factors has to be negative, and it has to add to a negative 6. So it looks like if I make this negative 8 times 2, right, negative 8 times 2 is negative 16, and when I add negative 8 and, and 2, I get a negative 6. So it looks like this is going to factor into x minus 8 uh, times x plus 2 equals 0. Okay, so now I can use the zero product property. I have the product of three factors now. I have, a, I have factors of x, x minus 8, and x plus 2. And I'll just set each one of those um, factors equal to 0. x minus 8 equals 0, or x plus 2 equals 0. And then find the values of x that make um, those factors zero. Now this is already solved. X equals zero, right? That that's that 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 would um, solve that quadratic. That would be a solution to that as well. It's not a quadratic, right? It's, like it's a cubic equation. But x equals zero would solve that. Would be a solution to that equation. Um, here I get x equals eight. Here I get x equals minus two. All right. So my solutions are x equals 0, comma, 8, comma, minus 2. Any of those values, if you plug them into the original equation, uh, will work. They'll satisfy that equation. All right, so let's take a look at the next one. Now, this one looks like a quartic, but um, um, we can actually use the techniques of solving quadratics to solve this. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little substitution. I'm going to say y is equal to x squared. And I know that x to the fourth is x squared squared. And then I can, I, I probably want to move the 2 over, right? I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides and so that I have um, a 0 on the right. And now if I make that substitution, what I end up with is y squared plus y minus 2 equals 0. So it's kind of sneaky, right? <laughs> it's kind of sneaky. But um, so I'm just using the fact that that x to the fourth is the square of x squared. All right. All right. So now, now that's a quadratic that I can factor, right? I'm looking for factors of negative 2 that add up to 1. So I'm thinking negative, two, well, be actually 2 times a negative 1 would equal negative 2 and then add the 1. So I'm this factors into x plus 2 times x minus, or sorry, not x, y. <laughs> we're, doing, we're doing y now. y minus 1 equals 0. All right, and then I just want to, I want one of those factors to be 0. So y plus 2 equals 0, or y minus 1 equals 0. And so that gives us y equals negative 2, or y equals positive 1. So y equals negative 2 or 1. All right. So that's sneaky, but wait, we're not done, are we? <laughs> I ran out of room, too. Um, we're not done because we have to remember that y is x squared, right? And we want values of x. 
we want values of x. So I need to go back to, I need to find x. So this is saying that x squared, why don't I just do this? I'll say that y, y, which is equal to x squared, is that. So now I need to unsquare both sides. So x squared, um, so we have two equations. We're going to have x squared equals negative 2. And that's not going to work, right? If I unsquare both sides, I have to take the square root of negative 2. That's not going to work. So that's not going to give me a solution. Or x squared is equal to 1, right? Now this one has two solutions. x is equal to um, 1 or negative 1. Or I could write it plus or minus 1. So my final solution is this. Um, the values of x that satisfy that uh, equation would be uh, plus or minus 1. All right. So that's the only two. <laughs> Make sure that you uh, follow through on the problem and, um, and also check to make sure that you don't have any solutions that don't work. Okay. So uh, we're trying to solve for x, not y. All right, let's look at these next two. Let's next two examples. Oh, we got more. We got quite a few here. Okay, all different variations of hidden quadratics. So let's take a look at this one. One thing I, one mistake I see people do a lot is just to say, oh, there's a common factor of x on both sides. Let's just divide both sides by x. Mm -mm. Well, that's okay as long as x is not equal to zero. Right? If x is equal to 0, we can't do that. So um, what I'm going to do instead is, is rearrange this equation and subtract the 64, um, 64x from both sides. All right. Now you can see I have a common factor of x, and I can factor that out. Um, I get x squared minus 64. And if you recognize that that's the difference of two squares, then you get x uh, minus 8 times x plus 8 equals 0. And now you have three factors. Um, one of those factors has to be 0, so either x is equal to 0, or x could be 8, or x could be negative 8. Okay, now I've kind of skipped a step here because that's oftentimes once you get good at it, you just, you're not going to, but I, you know, you can write out x equals 0 and x minus 8 equals 0 and x plus 8 equals 0. But, you know, you'll get to the point where it's like, okay, you got these three factors, you know, you can figure out which x values make, make those 0 straight away without having to write out the linear factors. All right, so those are my uh, solutions to that. Uh, equation. All right, now so you can see we got we factored out the x and we ended up with a difference of two squares. All right, so now this is a rational equation. <laughs> and um, we're actually going to be studying rational equations later on in the in this class. Um, but the first thing I would do here is try to get rid of those fractions. I don't like, I mean, nobody likes working with fractions. So, uh, <laughs> so I would try to clear the fractions first. So let's do this. If we, we know that if we multiply both sides by the same amount, then um, I will, I will uh, it's still a true equation, right? So I'm going to take both sides and multiply by the denominators. So I'm going to take x over x plus 6, and I'm going to multiply it times x plus 6, and I'm going to multiply by x plus 2. All right, and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. 1 over x plus 2, and I multiply times x plus 6, and x plus 2. All right? That allows me to cancel the denominator, right? Because this is all like this over 1, right? This over 1. Um, and I multiply, and I can cancel those factors, right? So then I just have x times x plus 2 is equal to x plus 6, right? Yeah, x plus 6. I don't even need the, don't even need the, don't need the parentheses. Just x plus 6 is all that's left on that other side. All right. So the other thing that some people learn, and this is more of a trick, is just doing cross multiplication. You can multiply, oops, it's not very good. All right. I can multiply, I can cross multiply and get x times x plus 2 equals um, x plus 6 times 1. 
so you could go straight there but it really comes from being you know from multiplying both sides by the same amount all right so now let's uh, expand this out x squared plus 2x and let's move everything to one side so i'm going to actually subtract x and subtract 6 from both sides so minus x minus 6 equals 0. combine like terms i get x squared plus x minus 6 equals 0. All right, now I've got a quadratic that I can solve. I need factors of negative 6 that add to 1, right? And so I know that if I take 3 times negative 2, that's a negative 6, and that adds to 1. So I'm going to x plus 3 and x minus 2 equals 0. So x is equal to negative 3 or positive 2. All right, all right, you got a couple more examples to go through here. Um, so let's do that. So here we have a square root. Um, well, let's square, let's square both sides. That's what I would say. Get rid of the square root by squaring both sides. All right, now you have to be a little careful because when you square both sides, um, you know, we don't know, we kind of lose some information, right? Because when we square both sides, whether it's positive or negative, it would be positive if you square both sides. So you lose some information. So um, you always have to check for extraneous roots when you when you are extraneous answers when you square both sides. But so here we get 9x, right? When I square 3 times the square root of x, I get 9x is equal to 4x squared. And now, now this is another case where you want to be careful about, the, you don't want to just divide both sides by x because x could be 0, all right? And so what I would probably do is equal is because I kind of like the leading coefficient to be positive. So I'm going to actually move everything to the right hand side this time. Uh, minus 9x. And then I can factor it, right? So x times 4x minus 9. And that's all equal to 0. So I can still use the zero product property. All right. Just I moved everything to the um, right hand side this time. So here I'm going to get x is equal to 0, or I'm going to get x is equal to a positive 9 over 4. That would make um, that second term equal to 0. Now I should go back and check these, right? Make, so I, I can take the square root of 0, um, and it, you know, so if I plug in 0 to the original equation, I, it works, right? In the same way with 9 fourths. Um, that one also should work, right? So 9 fourths, uh, the square root of that is going to be 3 halves times 3, gives you 6 halves, and um, so it should give you the same answer, right? It should, it should work, <laughs> okay? So let's do this last one here, and I'm going to, again, square both sides. Square both sides. So I'll end up with 2x plus 3 equals x squared. All right. I'm again just going to move everything to one side. I like the coefficient of x squared to be positive. So I'm going to move everything to the right hand time, right hand, right hand side this time. So 0 is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 3. Just subtracting 2x and subtracting 3 from both sides. And now I can factor the right hand side. I need factors of negative 3 that add to 2. So I'm going to get x minus 3 and x plus 1 equals 0. All right. I can always foil that out and make sure that I've got the right answer. And that does work out. So that means that x is equal to 3 or negative 1. All right. Now, again, you should always check. You should always check these answers. Um, because when you have a square root and then you square both sides, you could end up with a negative answer um, that really wouldn't work. Now, in this case, if I plug in 3, um, I get 6 plus 3 is 9 is 3, so 3 equals 3. If I plug in negative 1, that also works. So you get the square root of 1 is equal to the, is equal to, um, well, actually, no, that doesn't work, does it? <coughs> okay, so this is a good example of one that doesn't work. Um, the three works fine. If I plug in, um, if I plug in the negative one, right? I get um, two. Uh, man, <laughs> I 
I get, actually, let's just write it this way. T negative 2 plus 3 is equal to negative 1, right? So this is, right, this is 1 equals 1, or it is equal to negative 1, and that's not true. So this is an extraneous, extraneous solution. Okay, and it just comes from the fact that we squared both sides and we lost information when we squared both sides. You lost, um, if you know, here in this case, if, um, if x is negative and you square it, you get a positive, and so you lose information. So really the only solution is x is equal to 3. All right, well, um, I will uh, let you work on these next practice problems, and I'll see you in class.